Welcome to the Wake Up Podcast. My name's Marcus. Usually I do the video around here, but uh, for a change, I thought I'd put the cameras on tripods and get in front of it for a change. And I'm joined by some lovely guests. We have Ed on the marketing side, as well as Elle uh, on the graphic design side. And then we've got a very special guest, uh, one of the first people to join the Wake Up team, actually, uh, Rick on the design side. Hi, Marcus. You all right? I'm very good. All the better for seeing you. I bring joy into your life, that's all. I didn't know what to say to that. <laughs> no, no it, it's, it's good. Like the whole point of this podcast is to get more of the team involved and just hear different perspectives. The team's actually quite big now. And I know Rick, me and you, we did consider doing a podcast quite a while ago for the yeah, company. Uh, yeah, that, uh, a number of years back, wasn't it? Um, mm. When the team was, what, about a third of the size it is now? Oh, less than that. So oh, yeah, um, yeah. it was, yeah, it was exciting times to, to try and do something different. We'd not done that before. You'd only been with the company a short time doing mm-hmm, some great exactly. videos so and stuff. So we had a lot of ideas out. for different things and different kinds of content, um, but we're just, we're just too busy. And the team being so small at the time, mm. um, everyone had multiple roles. I mean, a lot of people still do. I mean, Ed, you know, you're on the marketing side, but you also did a lot for the design of the office and you're spearheading this podcast along with Elle. So, you know, everyone's still got multiple jobs, but we just feel we've got more capacity to do this kind of thing now. And it's exciting. Yeah, for sure. It just felt like the right time to do it. Um, Obviously, with with a lot going on within Wakelet at the minute anyway, um, we had a lot more to speak about, I suppose, at the minute. Not that we ever didn't, but there's there's a lot more that we can put out in terms of our our areas of expertise, thought leadership, that kind of stuff. So because we have got so much going on at the minute, it just made sense that, right, this is probably the right time to do it um you know we're, we've uh, we've got to sp- uh, a place within the business itself that we've got i think what is it now 40 40 something or yeah, about 44 members of staff exactly so, so a bit more how, a bit more resource a bit more uh, how does that feel <laughs> rick because you know you were number one literally it's, it's, it's absolutely crazy yeah even even when we were at like 16 like uh, what was it beginning of 2020 mm-hmm. um still felt like a massive company to me because it was obviously just me and Jam for, for some time sat around a dinner table for God knows <laughs> doing what. <laughs> just trying to make f- it happen. Yeah, so. just anything we could think of, we were trying to see if we could get those numbers up and uh, and now we've got a crazy community worldwide. Mm-hmm. Um, an office I would have, wouldn't have even dreamed of uh, actually setting up in yeah, and yeah. an awesome team right across the board that specialises in so many things that we couldn't have even do it a little yeah, bit of. literally. Like, so. like, for example, having someone dedicated for graphic design as well with what Elle does. I mean, exactly. I've been here just over a year now um, and to see the team grow even, well, the amount it has in that time is just incredible. Mm-hmm. So I can only imagine how you feel <laughs> seeing it literally grow from number one. Um, but like Ed said, it's just a really exciting time with the company growing, with the community growing, with the numbers growing in general. So be able to start a podcast that we haven't tried before and just learn as we go. It's something new for all of us that I think we can all just learn from. It's just a really nice experience. But it's not just um, getting the team involved. I think when, um, Elle, you were initially thinking about doing a podcast with Wakelet, um, it was about how can we bring you know, other people in, whether it's mm-hmm. users, get them on the podcast, um, mm-hmm. or whether it's just other companies, business owners, um, local to us, get them in the office, mm-hmm. um, just to offer different kinds of insights and perspectives. Yeah. Um, this is a new platform for us. What excites you about that? Well, I think it's, like you said, exciting to have just so many different people on here, different opinions, different thoughts, different ideas. Um, The kind of idea of getting our community involved and the local community in Manchester, expanding our network, learning from people, allowing them to learn from us. It's all exciting. It's just going to be so nice to hear from so many different people um, and to have the opportunity to kind of share our platform, given that we do have such a broad audience now being able to help like smaller creators or people in the community that have got great ideas that wouldn't have been heard otherwise, being able to kind of be that voice for them, I think is really special. Um, And it's just really exciting to be part of. And for, and for you, Rick, as well. um, In fact, I think next week uh, we're going to be doing an episode with um, Yushin and Safer on the product and the design side. But for a long time, Rick, it was just you doing all the design for Wakelet. (laughs) Um, So, but now we're we're at a point where rather than just, the marketing team or the growth team and the dev team we now have sub teams within the bigger team um so how does that feel as well it's an absolute relief to be honest um <laughs> no it's uh it, it it was amazing to be able to have the 
have just been the main focus for design at the very beginning when it was so small because you weren't worried about trying different things out and playing around and uh, my experience was literally nothing it was all self-taught so I'm learning as I'm going now that we've got the team I'm learning off them I've learned a lot during the years but there's still a lot of things I don't know and having that team there to support and I can support them they can support me is a great feeling and we can actually try more things out than what we used to be able to do um doing things like this as well is just having Al and Sam helping with graphics and also jumping on with UX and stuff it makes it a million times easier and challenge each other and come up with great ideas that we wouldn't have even thought of before so that's no, it's, really, it's fun it's great that's a really good point actually so l when you and sam joined to really lead the graphic design side of things for the growth team mm-hmm. um creating assets and even helping out me with a few animations for mm-hmm. you know videos and so on um did you ever think that you would also end up branching out and doing a little bit of like ux type stuff and designs for the actual site as well mm-hmm. of course no not at all to be honest with you i am um just thought I'd be focused on graphics which at the time I thought like that's great I've just graduated it's what I did my degree in it kind of makes sense but to have kind of be able to look back and to see how much I have done with other people with other teams with sort of just different parts of the business I just feel really lucky to be honest with you I don't think I would have had that experience anywhere else Um, so it has been nice to branch out and realize that actually I do enjoy doing things outside of graphics and I can learn more than sort of what I learned on my uni degree and I guess that's kind of one of the key things that we keep saying that we can learn from other people and we can learn from different places Um, and that's what I just love about Wakelet that we're just constantly evolving constantly learning and just constantly having new um, experiences and, and new opportunities so to have been able to work on graphics to work on UX to work on animation it just means that the business is going from strength to strength and so am I I guess. It's fantastic. And you say that you feel lucky, but I'd like to speak for the whole team and say we're very lucky to have you. You're very good at what you do. And to be honest as well, like Marcus. the whole the whole <laughs> the whole team is actually like we've actually got a really good team. Like we've got mm. so many talented people who've come in. The thing is it it gets you challenging yourself because mm. it's very easy to get into a like mundane kind of process that uh, you know how to do something. And you'll just keep on repeating that without evolving it and making it better. Mm -hmm. Having people that might not even be doing that particular job for a long period of time gets you out of that routine and and challenges yourself to do more. So it makes it more enjoyable, more exciting. I mean, I've I've definitely noticed that from from my work. Um, It's it's great fun. It uh, re reignites that fire really and that yeah, passion yeah. that you have within the company and that's what we that's what i like with the whole team it's mm-hmm. everyone's got that drive and and want to do the best we can because it's not about just being oh we want to be successful we want to create a great product that's mm-hmm, used yeah. used by many many people and they find it useful and it helps them yeah yeah that's, then, the, that's the biggest thing and when the comments come in on youtube or through twitter or just the feedback or whatever it might be it's so inspiring for us and i know that's a word that gets thrown around a lot in this kind of sector, in the tech space, especially like, well, in in the ed tech sphere as well. Um, I know that we're trying to um, branch out to other sectors too. Um, It's genuine. We genuinely feel like really like, you know, lucky that we've got um, such a great community, great users and a great team to, you know, it's it's like, it's like a revolution. It's like a cog that just keeps Mm -hmm. on turning. It's really cool. Um, But for myself, um, this was my first real role you know I, I had jobs before wake up but in terms of a proper career this was the first place that i ever you know came to mm-hmm. um like pretty much straight from uni or even before i finished uni remember you're not the only one. Oh, really wait wait you as well yeah this was my first full-time proper job oh wow okay well that's completely thrown off where <laughs> i was gonna go because I was, I was gonna say to you and to ed how um wake up today compares to well, for you, I guess, previous jobs, but then for Rick, I guess, how Wakelet was in the early days. So, Ed, how, how do mean, you feel? I, I, I've been often referred to as uh, the, the jack of all trades, as you can probably tell from, uh, from, from what I do around the office. Well, just getting yourself involved in lots of different things. Yeah, I, I, think, I, think, I think for me growing up, I never, <clears throat> I, 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 I never accepted knowing just one thing I think you know that's that just comes part and parcel of having severe ADHD but um it was uh it was a case of I, I, I had there was just a, a need for more knowledge um so when it when it came to to actually you know 
getting a job growing up. Um, I, I started around uh, around 15 years old. I uh, started as a, as a weekend labourer um, because I had I was just such a manual kid. As a kid, I was always like you know constructing stuff. Um, one of my favourite things to do was, uh, was was build model planes, and that sort of started my obsession with planes. Um, but then throughout my life, I'm now coming up to 30 this year. Um, having worked across multiple industries um, for the last, well, since I was 15, so 14 years now, um, I, I took that uh, that, that labouring position um, and I ended up getting qualified as a designer, um, building gardens, designing gardens. And then I, that, that just after a few years, having started that quite young, it wasn't some, it's something that I could never see myself really kind of growing with because uh, I, I worked originally with a guy that was uh, sort of my mentor and he was um, you know he'd been doing it his whole life and I just kind of thought uh, you know there's there's something out there for me that's slightly more I don't know probably satisfying to, to what I needed at the time so um, fulfilling fulfilling yeah it, that just wasn't it got to a point where um, you know jumping into different industry completely um, from that and that's when I, I switched over to advertising and marketing but even within that role I've experienced almost everything within that, um, and um, yeah, I got you know now now I'm here at Wakelet after a fair few years of, of you know working at different places, startups um, to to you know multinational companies um, with with offices worldwide. It's it, it Wakelet is just something completely different, and that's the reason why I think ultimately we wanted to start this podcast and why we tried to like you know get it get it going was because there's so many people here. That have had experiences throughout their life, but also there's so many. We, we have a, we, we each have networks, and this is something that we tend to discuss quite a lot in um, in, in our marketing um, team, which is the, the network effect. Essentially, you know, there's there's one person has one opinion, but that person could also have a connection who's got a either a similar or, or contrasting opinion. In which case, we want to hear about that. That's something that we want to actually put out to our our uh, our community, our user base, um, which is the fact that Wakelet is there to, to allow you to build your knowledge because of the way that, that the product is set up. Um, well, it's one of the uses anyway. So we thought, what's, what's more fitting? Why don't we make a podcast where we discuss everything that the, the, that we can possibly talk about, which is everything, which is kind of what encompasses Wakelet or what Wakelet encompasses, which is everything in one place kind of thing. But mm-hmm. that's not a strap line, don't, don't quote me that. <laughs> yeah, no. It kind of <laughs> works, but it doesn't. But yeah, so, so that's the reason for this podcast because, you know, I think um, one of the things that we wanted to really push is the, is the fact that people can, can learn and develop themselves without having to, to, to you know, especially in this day and age where there's so much value in the internet, but also so much, you know, disinformation, misinformation. It's about trying to, to, to navigate through that and understand uh, where you as a person can grow. Um, and I think a lot of what we talk about tends to be around uh, comfort zones and getting out of that. And that's where you tend to progress as an individual. So as much as information as we can get across to, to, to a listener, to a viewer, we're happy with that. So, so that's really kind of what's, what sparked this is, is all internal conversations about where we can take ourselves as a business, but also as individuals working with each other, collaborating with each other. Let's, let's give that out because that's kind of what we do at Wicklow. We just like to, we like to give, we're givers. Yeah. Well, for me, it's about sharing perspectives and we've got a very diverse team with interests in lots of different things. Mm -hmm. And what I love about where we are as a company now is just how, well, we're not a huge company, but it feels big to me and definitely for you just because when I joined, I think I was number 14, um, roughly. Um, and then ob- right. obviously you were number one. <laughs> so, you know, it's it, it's crazy. We're at a point where um, we're busy doing our own thing. But then over there, there'll be like developers and designers and people doing something completely different. Mm-hmm. Whereas back in the day, it used to be there's this one thing that we're working on or maybe two things and everyone's aware of what everyone's doing because we're with there's, there's barely anyone in the room there's only a you know, very small team um but yeah and that's obviously what but i'd like the podcast to be yeah. agreeing with you is just a platform to share those perspectives absolutely and uh and just see where the conversation takes us um going back to my previous question um previous roles i mean Okay, I actually didn't realise that this was your, um, well, I guess first proper job, because I know that you were, um, before Wake Up, um, doing some contracting, I believe. And yeah, yeah, so um, I've had four jobs before Wake Up, mm. all part-time, all one day a week, if that. Got you. Um, all mainly during while I was at uni, just so I could actually earn some money, because mm-hmm. it's just expensive. So I was working uh, working at a aviation shop, 
It's all aviation in Wake Club. It, it tends it's to be crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. Yeah. When you when you mentioned about building model planes, I was just like, Yeah. There's another one. It's weird because my favourite plane of all time is the A three eighty. And it just so happens that, you know, our founder is or was um, ex uh, uh, Airbus, it's Airbus so. employee, yeah, exactly. So it's it's a weird, it's a weird. Uh, yeah, it's it's very very strange how more and more people are coming in that have some form of interest or background in aviation. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, I yeah, well, I probably should admit that, should I? That I'm, I love planes. I don't know, it's a weird thing. <laughs> don't don't, don't, stand, don't worry. I stand don't worry. there looking up at the sky. <laughs> <laughs> it couldn't get any weirder than than mine. It's it's fine. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Actually, get uh, writing down registrations and lining them off in a book every. <laughs> Every time oh, yeah, I you're went. a proper plane spotter. Plane aren't spotter, you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not done it for years, but yeah, that's what yeah. I used to do. Mm-hmm. Anyway, we'll move on, move on from that <laughs> one. Uh, that's <laughs> for another day. Uh, yeah, so worked in an aviation shop uh, for 10 years part time. That was literally one day a week, every single, every single week for 10 years, just to earn a bit of cash. Um, worked at a flying school, yeah. uh, which I was also tra- uh, training to get my pilot's license at. And. Working at a pub. Nice. Just to, you know, break up a little bit. Yeah, of course. A bit of so, variation. Yeah. But it was uh, near the airport. No, it wasn't, unfortunately. <laughs> that would have been good it if it was. It was a sky bar. There, there was, <laughs> Manchester Airport does have a pub at the end of the runway. It does, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've never been. Apparently, it's quite nice. It is. It's not bad at all. A bit to noisy honest. inside. Um, but it depend, in depends on what airplanes are taking up, I suppose. <laughs> depends what you're interested in when you go there, mm. whether it's the pint or the planes. <laughs> well, that's the thing, because, I mean, for some people, planes are very noisy and, um, well, a, a nuisance, actually. But for people like you and a little bit of myself and definitely Jam, just the, the sound of the airplane taking off, the engines, the power, the roar, it's really like, I don't know, yeah, it's, it's, it's good. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's always got something there, but they're definitely not the same as they used to be. Mm-hmm. Showing me well, age a little bit there. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's always been a passion, so it's always going to stick with me. Uh, and then after that, uh, it was airport consultancy. Wow! So okay. um, so there's, there's deep roots in aviation embedded in you, and oh, therefore been, in the company too. Yeah, there's deep, deep roots in in that kind of area. And the fact that me and Jam both have a uh, big aviation background, we both went to the same uni. Uh, he studied aircraft engineering. I studied aviation technology. <laughs> and you met at an airport. As and well. we met at an airport <laughs> as well. Uh, it's it's a weird, weird experience. Um, when you look back on it, definitely. So I'm I'm waiting for the book to be written. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's 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 nice to. Um, I've always wanted to build something from the ground up. Um, mm-hmm. I've t- taught myself to code. Everything that I know is self taught. I guess you thought planes were too complicated to build from scratch, so you'll just build a tech company instead. I got a little bit bored with paper aeroplanes. Ah, oh, fair um, enough, yeah. And just gave up from that. Well, I mean, if you've mastered it, then I mean, you know, you might well, as well, new challenge. Depends on uh, if I've mastered it, if I can only get them to go a metre in distance. Oh. Or just give up on it. <laughs> I know. And the um, the payload's not very big on them as well. They've not really got any... Uh, yeah, I can't go anywhere with them. Yeah, so, no. no. So, so, yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, t- t- taught myself to code. Um taught design, web design, all that kind of stuff. And when I left the airport consultancy job, I'd started my own web design company, which I think was only operating for about four months before Jam went and got in touch and said, I've got this idea. So, yeah, I mean, it it just goes back to what I say. We're we're wanting to build something that's useful for people, that helps people. And that's all I've uh, envisaged on creating for people is is Mm -hmm. tools that help them. And with the internet and technology becoming so vast and we need it so much now, mm-hmm. um, it, we've got to help those that may be struggling in different areas. And even if it's helping people with their own jobs or personal uh, tasks they're wanting to complete or even learning a new skill themselves, mm-hmm. it's all possible with Wakelot and that's that's the amazing thing of it. That's true. Whether you're um, using the platform or even if you work here there's a lot of opportunities to try something new like this podcast um like design um like video um Mm -hmm. ux all that kind of stuff there's a lot to get involved in and it's it's really cool um i wanted to keep this initial episode just quite short as a bit of an introduction to what it is and why we're doing it and um you know show a few faces as well um unless anyone else has uh anything else to add no apart from uh obviously keep your keep your ears to the ground or to to the skies. To uh, any, <laughs> any major podcast network. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and YouTube, obviously, you know, we're going to be putting out quite a few episodes. Uh, we're going to aim for at least 
uh, one, if not two episodes a week. So, um, you know, we're going to have special guests coming in um, every now and again. Obviously, we've got different viewpoints, different perspectives from the team itself. Um, and, and yeah, I think it's going to be really exciting. We're going to try and get out of the office. Um, we have all this fancy kit, so let's uh, let's take it around. It's all uh, it's all quite mobile. So, yeah, we're going to try and get into some certain places. Um, obviously, interview uh, certain people depending on our, our topic. Um, but really, it's just uh, if we if we can deliver any value. Obviously, you know, drop a drop a message to to to, to Wakelet. I don't know how we're going to do that. Someone else could provide some sort of way of, of channeling that message. Well, in. there'll be some um, contact details on the YouTube video description. Um, but I mean, you can just get in touch. DM us on Twitter. Yeah. The usual ways to get in touch. You know, we're very um, let us know what you're very approachable. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. You know, if, you, if there's some some topic that you you think that we're missing or you'd like to hear about um, or, or or want us to discuss. Um, at some point, we'll also be doing phone-ins as well, so with the mm-hmm. community, so uh, we have that capability. Um, so, so yeah, keep your eyes peeled, keep your ears to the ground, or the sky, whichever way you want to look at it. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and uh, yeah, we're going to be um, delivering these uh, quite regularly, so... Yeah, fantastic. Well, Watch Ed, out. Ed, thank you very much. Elle, Rick, it's been a pleasure. Anything thank else you from you guys? Um, no, I guess it's just going to be following the podcast on Wakelet. We're at the Wakelet podcast on Wakelet. Um, we'll be uploading the collections with these episodes in, any resources, any things that we've discussed. Um, so when Rick and Ed both said that Wakelet is good for everything, they really meant it. Um, and it's perfect for, pod- for podcasts. So yeah, keep your eyes over there as well. Fantastic. Thank you, Rick. Yeah, I think from my side, um, I'm just excited to see this uh, start to grow. Yeah, It's been an idea that's been going on for years and is now coming to fruition so it's well uh, in the same way that wakelet as a concept and as a platform um so is the wakelet podcast so mm. you know we're starting this journey and uh, it'll be good to see where it goes mm. but yeah. um yeah thank you for joining me thank you for listening or watching as it were and um yeah see you soon brilliant cool cheers, cheers. Bye.